Hello traders, this is Forensic Forex with Deontay. In this video, we will speak about trading news events. Stay tuned. Leave the indicators alone. News events typically inject momentum into the market, often prompting traders to anticipate where price might trend in response to the news. Making educated predictions about these movements is a common strategy rooted in technical analysis. Method. Once one side of liquidity has been rated, find a trade idea in the opposite direction. As you can see below, we have two examples. We have one for a sell example and another for a buy example. We'll take a further look in the framework on these ideas. For our sell scenarios, it's pretty straightforward. What we're waiting for is a buy side liquidity pool on the 15 minute time frame must be rated first. After that, we're going to stalk a one minute lower time frame entry above the kill zones opening price very crucial after that we're going to be looking and anticipating and speculating that price is going to revert back down to sell side after rating buy side same thing vice versa for our buy scenarios we must wait for a sell side liquidity pool on the 15 minute time frame to be rated first after that we're going to stalk a one minute lower time frame entry below the kill zones opening price we're anticipating and speculating that price is going to revert back to buy side liquidity pool after rating sell side. Now, before we get into the examples, we have to look at a certain ideology that is very crucial. I think this ideology should be implemented in any level of trader or any style of trader. This line that we have can represent the kill zones opening price. Now, that's the opening price for Asian session, London session, and New York session, right? Our classic kill zones that we know. When price moves above that opening price of that kill zone, it's in a premium. This is where you're going to find ideal sell scenarios. Same thing, vice versa. When price moves below the kill zone's opening price, it's going to be in a discount. This is where you're going to find ideal buy scenarios. Keep this in mind as this will put you on the better side for the situation or speculation you are looking for. Let's take a look at some of these examples. Here we're looking at British pound versus US dollar. We're going to look at some of the framework. As you can see, we have a news event here. Trading view showing us here at 8.30, it was the PPI. And then also at 10, we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment. So the fact is that there is a news event during this New York kill zone. And how we would trade this is by following these steps here. We have our London lunch. I consider it a dead zone. This is from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. So it's that gap between London and New York, that little small window of time. Here, I'm going to frame my 15 minute buy side and sell side liquidity pools. So I'm either gonna take swing lows or the lowest lows that I have available that is unbroken. Sometimes it's not a swing low and sometimes it's not a swing high, but it's just a low point. So this is gonna be our sell side here. Let me double check. There we go. That's gonna be our sell side. And then our buy side is gonna be this high here at seven. So now we framed all of our liquidity pools. We don't have any other swing lows or swing highs that are unbroken. So we are already done with step one. What we're going to wait now is to see if price is going to break either buy side or sell side. We're not trying to run into this market anticipating whether or not it's going to run buy side or sell side. We just want the market to do what it's going to do. Then we're going to react after the break. This dashed line that I'm marking it off here, this is 7 a.m. opening price. So this is the start of the kill zone. Like we said before, this is very crucial. We'll leave it as NYO, New York Open. This is very crucial for us to understand whether or not we should be looking for buys or sells. Let's play it forward to see what happens. Price runs up and takes out buy side liquidity pool. At this point, we should be looking and speculating if we can find a lower time frame entry on the one minute time frame to get us to revert back down to sell side after purging buy side liquidity pool. Now, the news event is at 8.30. However, you can still find an entry prior to the event to see if you can catch the sentiment or the injection that's going to follow in at 8.30. The only way for us to potentially catch the injection is for us to be in the news event prior before the data drops. Let's go down to the one minute time frame. We're going to be looking for a very specific entry. Some of you guys are familiar with it. And if you aren't, please take notes. The entry idea is going to be a swing low that is rated with a fair value gap. And we can see we have one right here. Let's zoom in. As you can see, there's a fair value gap 
We'll mark it off with this zone. That's the fair value gap. And there goes a swing low, which is also equal to the opening price. We'll just make this more obvious to see. There goes that swing low formation, ran through with speed. That's my entry idea. Notice as well, this entry idea is forming around New York open or 7 a.m.'s opening price, the kill zone's opening price, the start of New York kill zone right there. We're going to look for a short opportunity above that price point. The fact that it's forming near the price point is still a quality idea, but we would prefer and ideally want to get that sell above that opening price. So how I would frame this one in this particular example is I would just look to go short either one pip above the opening price. Then I'll be looking for a one-to-one -one scenario. Now you may gauge it a little differently. You may look for a two-to-one or three-to-one. I like to keep it very simple. That would be my two-to-one scenario. Once price returns back into where my entry or fair value gap is, I'm looking to go short there. And notice the entry is forming before 8.30, before the PPI. So if you play it forward, watch to see what price does. And we can see here at 8.30, price runs down and takes out that sell side liquidity pool. So that's how I like to frame ideas, whether or not we have news or if there is multiple news events during that kill zone. We can see there's multiple news events. There's one and two. But for this first one that came at 8.30, that's how I would frame the idea after price took out buy side, purged the buy side, and reverted back down to the sell side. Let's take a look at a buying opportunity. You can see this time period from this time period again, that is going to be our London lunch. That is going to be a dead zone. This is from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. I do not like to look for trades here, right? No trading allowed. But however, we are looking to trade during that New York kill zone, though, which I also consider our live zone. I want to see price be lively, be dynamic, move around a lot. And this is going to be from 7, as you all know. to 10 a.m. Trading is allowed here. We want to trade here. We framed all our buy side and sell side liquidity pools between that little small window of time between London and New York. And you can see at 7 a.m. price comes down and takes out this swing low. So there is a purge on sell side liquidity prior to the news event. I'm going to take the speculation that price is going to revert back to buy side this level here or this one here it doesn't have to be all the levels just an educated guess on objective levels that we have on the 15 minute time frame these swing highs have buy side liquidity above it or buy stops above it someone that was selling short as a stop loss most likely above this high and this one here so there's orders residing above those highs we're trying to be counter to the break prior to the news event at 8.30, PPI again. We ran that 15-minute swing low. Let's go on to one minute, and we're going to stop for an idea that forms below where? Below the kill zone's opening price. So this would be the open. We'll draw that out. We're looking for price to give us a long opportunity or our entry below this New York open, or this is 7 a.m. Let's play it forward to see what we get. As you can see, we have a swing high right here. This is the swing high formation. And there goes the fair value gap. It's mixed in with a volume imbalance and other things as well. We're keeping it simple. The idea is simple, though. That's where we look to go long. As you can see, the market would have triggered us in long below 7 a.m., that's a discount. Anything below this price point here, this is a discount. This is where we're going to find ideal buys. Doesn't mean your buy speculation is going to be correct. But if you stick to the idea of getting a cheaper buy and the sentiment is correct, you're going to see the quality and the accuracy of your longs increase. Same thing vice versa.
it's better to buy down here than to buy up here above the open. You don't want to buy in a premium. That's ludicrous. You want to buy in a discount. So this is where the idea would have formed. That's that one-to-one. -one. Soon as it taps the beginning or the premium side of that fair value gap, that's where you're looking to go long. We'll play it forward just to see what happens. Price does pull us into some drawdown, and it shoots up. You see that? 830, and then price rallies up. Now, we know that there's going to be some drawdown. Not every trade that we're going to take is going to be the exact pivotal moment where price turns around and gives us the sell or gives us the buy with no drawdown. Sometimes there is drawdown. That's why we use a stop loss in the first place and reframe that risk. Whether that's 1%, 2%, 3%. If you're a beginner, I do recommend risking anywhere from 1% to a half percent. Get an understanding and get a feel in compounding your account over the years. As time goes on, you get a little more experience. You got a larger equity. You can start to risk a little more. Notice how though, at 8.30, price turns around quickly, sharp at 8.30. Where is it at? Right here. This one candle shoots all the way up and takes out buy side liquidity pools. Now, if we play it all the way through, it does get us stopped out, which is the risk that we take. Not all trades will hit your final TP that you're looking for, but always be wise enough and cautious that anything can happen after rating liquidity pools. Make sure to pay the trader something, whether you take off 50%, move your stop loss to break even, maybe you leave your stop loss there. It's all up to you. But do understand any trade that you take must have a stop loss because anything in the market can happen, regardless of how well the setup and signs are. So this is a buying opportunity. As you can see, we went from sell side and reverted back to buy side. Let's take a look at some London examples. We're looking at euro versus US dollar just prior to London kill zone. We can see the dead zone that we're utilizing is the Asia lunch. That's 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. No trading allowed. The reason I say no trading is allowed because more times than not, we see the market build up market sentiment here. Buy stop orders and sell stop orders are being built up. The market is either going into a phase of consolidation or accumulation. So no trading allowed. We do want to trade during the live zone or the kill zone. Because a lot more volume in general occurs around these kill zones, especially if they have some type of medium to high impact news event inside of them. We can see we have one here at 2 a.m. Trading view did not have it marked off, so I annotated it myself. We had the wholesale prices here at 2 a.m. to start at London, and then we had the inflation rate here at 245. Now, these were medium impact news events. Going into the session, we can see sell side's been rated below that 15 minute swing low. That sell side liquidity pool has been rated or purged. We're going to look to see if price is going to revert back to this buy side. That's the whole point of the idea. We're trying to find counterparty liquidity pools after one side's been rated. So sell side's been rated. Let's go down to the one minute and see if we can find an entry idea below or at least close to 2 a.m.'s opening price. So play it forward. And we can see here, there's a first entry that forms partially in a discount, like that other example we showed here. Now, I'm not saying it would be wrong to take this long idea, but if you are very picky, and as we talked about it, the best quality buy setups occur in a discount. You want to buy cheaper if you're going to be a buyer. It just makes sense logically. You wouldn't want to buy at a premium. You want to buy at something that's overvalued. No, you want to buy something that's undervalued below the kill zone's opening price. So this idea isn't bad. It could still be a quality setup because let's say you were going to go long on the top of that fair value gap here. It's close to fair value, the opening price, the opening bid of the kill zone. You're not paying an expensive premium. But if this entry was forming somewhere up here or anywhere higher, then you're paying a premium on your longs. And you don't want to do that. You want to buy as cheap as possible. So if you were going to take this idea, what I would recommend is either buying one pip below that kill zone's opening price inside that fair value gap within the region. Or you can wait to see if price will give a fair value gap completely below 2 a.m.'s opening price. It's all up to you as the operator. But these ideas are still quality, long opportunities. 
Let's play it forward and see what happens. See, news event happens. You'd even see the same entry idea occurs too. You got that fair value gap with a volume imbalance mixed in. And there goes that one. This one's completely below 2 a.m. So you pick your poison on what you really want to do. But the idea is trying to get that long below the open after we rate it sell side and revert back here as the draw. The news event comes out. I'm going to play it forward, see what happens. And we can see price hits TP going into 5 a.m. Right there. So again, it's taking out sell side, pulling itself cheap in a discount, ideal scenarios, and then looking to revert back up. And what a lag, what a trend. That was amazing to see. This brings me to the end of the video. I hope this video was valuable to you as a trader. If you enjoy this video, then I think you'll like these two as well. Please subscribe, like, or comment for more high quality Forex videos. As always, safe trading, leave the indicators alone, and peace.